the new color analyst for the Alabama Crimson Tide. This is the flagship home of Alabama Crimson Tide football, and we're proud to be able to welcome John Parker Wilson. How are you, my friend? Welcome back into the game. I appreciate it, man. I am doing great. How are you? How are things going in T-Town? Oh, everything is great. I mean, I can only imagine what the last few days has really been like for you as you get the announcement and uh, the word comes down and, and you get that call from Greg Byrne. You know, it's been exciting. It really has. I've had a lot of people reach out to me uh, congratulating, but um, super exciting. You know, always excited for football season to get here, and now we're, you know, just over a month until kickoff against Louisville. But now for me, uh, it takes on a little bit different meaning. It kind of feels like I'm getting ready for kickoff kind of like I used to. You know, the guys go to start training camp on Friday, so I feel like, you know, I'm kind of doing the same thing where these guys um, – the only difference is I get to do it in the air conditioning, you know, preparing just like they are, but really ready to go, ready for this huge opportunity and, and quite frankly, huge responsibility. Well, and I, obviously, all of us grow up in this state with radio, the connection with Eli Gold, and to be sitting in the same booth with him, I mean, something tells me just to, I mean, reflect on Eli Gold just for that voice that we relate to Alabama Crimson Tide football. Yeah, I mean, you're exactly right. And as a kid growing up in in Alabama, an Alabama fan, um, you know, my parents, my whole entire family is from Tuscaloosa, so we grew up listening to Eli Gold and Kenny Stabler. We would turn the TV off and turn the radio on and listen to these guys, so now to have that chance is pretty incredible. Um, and, you know, and as an Alabama fan, anytime you see a, a highlight or a replay, you know, from years past, it's – always with Eli's voiceover. I mean, I don't think they, they show a uh, Julio Jones touchdown or, or anything without Eli on there. So to be a part of that is pretty special. And even more so, you know, being an Alabama guy for my whole life, uh, to, to be able to, to do that and um, hopefully, you know, bring something to, to game day that, um, you know, was a part of me for so long. So I'm just super excited to continue to be able to be a part of the program and, um uh, you know, do something a little bit different. It will be. Now, Now, and I know it's a color analyst job, but, uh, you know, we kind of accept you in the media. How will it be on this side when you get to face Nick Saban from a media perspective? <laughs> That's a great question. I haven't thought about it, and I've never had to do it, right? So uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think we've got a great relationship, sure. as he does with most of his players. So, uh, you know, I won't be asking too hard of hitting questions, I imagine, but I, I know I remember uh, my good friend Greg McElroy had to do it a few years ago, and I think he asked uh, a, a question at SEC Media Days that Coach David didn't like it, and he, he treated him just like everybody else in the media. So uh, you got to love the, the honesty from Coach, and, uh, you know, it's part of it, right? It's, it's part of it, and I'm looking forward to it. John Parker Wilson right now joining us, the new color analyst for the Alabama Crimson Tide, former quarterback, four-year player here, three-year starter under Nick Saban and Mike Shula at the University of Alabama. We are now 72 hours, actually 71 hours and 55 minutes. We're counting it down to camp opens up here in Tuscaloosa. What advice would you give any player going through camp for the first time here under Nick Saban? Um, you know, I, I, I think there's – to the to the rookies to the to the freshmen that are coming, there's so much opportunity and there's so much, I think, fear of the unknown, right? Because you come from high school and you're the you're the you're the number one guy on campus, you're the number one guy in your state, um, and now you get to Tuscaloosa, and everybody on the team was the number one guy in their state. So it could be a little overwhelming, but the, the, these guys are here for a reason. It's because they're good players, they're good guys, they've got great character. I think, um, you know, just. You just listen to Coach Saban and the rest of the staff, and buy in and do exactly what they say. You're gonna you're gonna put yourself in a good situation. You know, it it goes back just like anything anybody does. It's working hard. It's doing the right thing. It's putting in the extra time. I mean, I can remember sitting in my dorm during training camp uh, at midnight when we had to wake up at you know 5 a.m. the next day, going over the plays. You know, when I was young, it was me and Brody. When Greg was young, it was him and I. And we're going over the plays in the room together, you know, acting like we're calling them in the huddle. So doing those things that uh, kind of set you apart, I think, is what makes the makes the great players. I remember Mark Ingram's first training camp, and you know, this is when we were, when we started to get some really good recruits 
and he, him, and I think him and Julio both did it. Every time he carried the ball, he'd run it to the end zone. Every time Julio caught the ball, he'd run to the end zone. And those little things that um, not everybody's doing. And, and look at those guys today; they're still playing the NFL, you know, over ten years later. So those those little things set you apart, and they and you know, in football and in life and everything we do. Let me ask you: elimination of two a days. Uh, when you when you think about it as a former player, two a days was. I assume leadership and a lot of character building. Uh, the grind is kind of like the fourth quarter when there's just a few minutes left and you got to go through another two hour practice. Taking that away, is there part of that that is going to be missing a little bit when you when you talk about removing two a days from fall camp? I'll be honest. I think with Coach Cochran and his staff and and what he does in the off season and how he handles um, the summer portion when the coaches aren't there, and he is the coach. And I think, you know, strength coach always sells him short because he's way more than just a strength coach. He is, you know, the fourth coordinator. And when you can have a guy like that with your players the whole season, I think that sep- separates us and sets us apart. I really do because we get that leadership. And, you know, I follow Valley of Football, Twitter, and Instagram, and all these different outlets, and you can kind of see what they're going through. Um, and, that, you know, we're getting our leadership – Different ways. And, yeah, back in the day it was two days and you had to suck it up and it was no fun. Uh, but they're doing it different ways, and I think it's a chance to set ourselves apart. And, and over the past few years we've done that. Um, and not everybody can do it. Not everybody can – or no, nobody else is doing the two days, so it's not like we're missing any reps. Uh, so it's an even playing field, and I think that, that separates us. Joe Parker, what would you guys do? Would you guys check in for camp and, and you guys – it's even the – upperclassmen that have their own apartment, they would check in during fall camp. Uh, what, where would you guys stay? Was it was it Burke that you guys would stay, or was it uh, uh, Rose Towers? I'm just trying to think of exactly where you guys would check in. So, uh, yeah, we we did stay at Rose Towers, and in my second year, um, the new Bryant Hall was built. So, yeah, we we all stayed in a room. Even if you lived off campus and you were an upperclassman, you report back at, you know, by 5 o'clock on Thursday – and you have to be there, and then, you know, you check in, and you get your key to your room, and then you've got a meeting start at 6.30, so you got to get there and pick up your playbook. Um, and it's a great time because it's a lot of bonding because there's your football from sunup to sundown, or really till you know, 10 or 11 o'clock at night. Uh, and you're getting to spend a lot of time with the coaches, with your fellow players. You learn a lot about each other, so it's, it's a it's – a, it's a fun time. It's a grueling time, but you really, you know, can can come together as a team. And I think that's one of the things Coach Saban always talks about: is, hey, we're trying to form our identity as a team, and every team has a different identity. And this is, you know, the thirty days where you can put that identity together. How hard is it? And this will be the final question. We're talking to John Parker Wilson, former Alabama quarterback and new color analyst uh, with Eli Gold on the Crimson Tide Sports Network that originates here inside 1029 and our sister station inside this building. Uh, John Parker, let me ask you, when you talk about competition, how hard is it just to not press and just play within the game when you're competing for play in time, whether it be quarterback, running back, any position, just knowing that, you know, you got to press to uh, to press to impress the coaches and to grab their attention, but also you want to play within uh, your skill set too. You're exactly right, and I think that's why the guys who end up playing on Saturday um, and who's going to end up being the starters on Saturday are the guys who can handle that pressure. I think, look, there's a lot of pressure in practice. If you're the starting left tackle, our right defensive end is pretty dang good, and you've got to be able to perform against some really good players. And to, to handle that pressure, is is it's not like it's going to be on Saturdays you know, in October, but it's it's pretty high. So there's there's a fine line between trying to do too much, um, and that's just you know part of of instincts, and and you try to hone that and and figure it out during camp. But it, it's it's tough. It really is because um, there's so many good guys on the field competing for just a few spots. Get it. But I think at the same time that competition makes everybody better. And over the past few years, when we've seen guys get hurt, like we did last year on defense, we had some some injuries, especially in the linebackers. Then the next guys be able to step up because he's he's already been through it. He's 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 sensed that pressure already. 
It's going to be exciting to hear your analysis from a quarterback perspective, something about the way that you guys understand not just your position, but every 22 guys on that field, you understand their role. And if you don't, then uh, chances are uh, you're probably not going to be playing for Nick Saban. You were able to do that for, for, for a lot of time. And I always enjoy the analysis that you provide. I mean, it's, it's fun to hear those quarterbacks talking football. Yeah, exactly, because as a quarterback, I've got to know the defensive scheme, or not me, the quarterback position has to know the defensive scheme just as well as you know what you're trying to do on offense. So when there's a strong set blitz and there's two linebackers coming, you've got to know what the back defensive end's doing and the cornerbacks. Even though you can't see them, you've got to know what's happening. and You've always got to be able to sense and feel everybody. Uh, it's going to be a little easier to do that in the, in the booth. Uh, because it, it's a lot easier to see when you don't have six, eight offensive linemen swarming around you. Hey, John Parker, talk about Tuscaloosa until you and Scott Peoples and his amazing staff there on Scott and Boulevard. Yep, amazing staff, just like we always talk about Scott, the general manager, right down on Scott and Boulevard. One price, one place where you don't have to worry about what the price is going to be. Uh, I'm in my 2018 Toyota 4 Runner right now. It's got all the bells and whistles. And the nice thing about it is, with all those extras and everything that goes on with the car and all the unknowns, the one price is right there on the window, uh, not to mention their service department. And I think the staff is really, really amazing. I've been able to spend a lot of time with those guys, so we know how good their cars are. And I think Tuscaloosa Toyota is just doing it different than everybody else. It's a great place uh, to go shopping for a car, so check them out at TuscaloosaToyota.com. And it's 1.9% APR up to 60 months on the 2018 Forerunner that's available right now, the big one sales event. Tuscaloosa, Toyota.com. John Parker, have a great week. Congrats again from all of us in Tuscaloosa. Happy to see you get the uh, the position, and uh, we're excited to talk with you as we continue uh, this segment. I appreciate you being part of the show. Man, I really appreciate it. Roll Tide.